I belong to a Zoom photography group uh, called Photography After Hours. And we're a group of about eight or nine photographers from the area. Uh, some of us live in different cities. And we get together on Zoom once a month and talk about photography. And normally we have a, a, a photographic assignment. So this month's assignment was to take photographs depicting decay in nature or architecture. Welcome back to the channel. For those of you that have not been here before, my name is Ron. Welcome and I'm glad you're here. In this video, we're going to use a vintage camera to take photographs for a photo, photo assignment for a Zoom meeting group that I belong to. So what I chose to do today is I took the D200 out with the 12 to 24 AFS F4 lens. So this is a newer lens on a vintage camera. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to show you how I load these photographs into Lightroom because this is unique and I'm going to show you why it's unique. This camera does not use standard memory cards. This camera uses a compact flash card and a lot of you probably never seen these before. I have. Uh, I've had digital cameras since the year 2000. And I believe it was probably around 2005 or so maybe when they switched away from these. Luckily for me, I didn't have a reader. I didn't think I did. But I found an old SanDisk USB card reader that I had uh, from years past. So I'm going to insert this card so I can load these photographs into my computer and it has a slot for this so all I did was plug it into my MacBook with a USB connector and I had to convert that from USB A to C and as you can see it fires right up okay and we're gonna get these files that I took today loaded in the Lightroom hit import and I took several compositions today so what we're going to do is um, we're going to load those up into a folder that I created uh, we're starting a brand new year so I'm going to close this down and go into 2024 and I went ahead and gave this folder a name I called it PAH PAH assignment and I've already got a uh, subfolder I want to use, Decay Architecture. And um, I'm going to go ahead and put a keyword in here. PAH, I think, is a keyword I have for photography after hours. And um, let's go ahead and call this um, Decay Architecture. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is uh, I'm going to edit these photographs in Lightroom and I'm going to take you over to Lightroom right now. Okay, we have loaded the images into Lightroom, and these are the three that I'm going to work with right now. Uh, this is a uh, bracketed set, uh, also, also known as HDR, and the first uh, image right here was shot at 1 80th of a second. All these were at F8 ISO 400 using the Nikon D200, with the 12 to 24 AFS F4 lens, which is a modern lens. Uh, it's a DX uh, lens, but this is a DX camera also. Mind you that this is only a 10 megapixel camera with a older sensor in it. It does not have the newer CMOS technology. This one has a CCD sensor, and it's a, uh, a sensor that I desire for its film-like qualities, okay? So what we're going to do right now is we're going to combine these three images uh, into one file and we're going to merge them. We're going to let Lightroom do that for us. So we're going to hold down the command key or um, on a Mac or a control key on Windows. And we're going to select all three photographs here in the film strip view. Or you can do it here in the grid view. Just uh, make sure you click on the center of the picture when you do this to get all of them selected. Then I'm going to do a right click, go down to photo merge and hit HDR. 
The shortcut key for that would be Command H or Control H. And we're going to let uh, the merge process happen. I go ahead and do auto align, even though these shots were done on a tripod. Uh, some people don't, that's their choice. Uh, I also told the HDR merge uh, part of the program to go ahead and turn on the auto settings for Lightroom, and that's fine, and then create a stack. And we're gonna go ahead and hit the merge key. And now, uh, so Lightroom has uh, created a stack here of images and if I want to see all the images that belong to this stack, these were the originals. This is the merged one. So what we can do is take a quick look at that. And this is the merged version. This is the uh, 80, 180th second. And you can see that's what Lightroom has done. Break. Now we're going to go into the develop module and look at this file that Lightroom created out of the three images, and you'll see that the tone settings are already set up for you. Uh, you can make minor adjustments here if you want to. Um, I'm probably gonna increase the shadows just a little bit. Okay, not much. Um, the first thing I wanna do to this image is I wanna straighten it. The uh, camera was not straight, and the roof line is not straight, neither is the porch, although I do feel like they are level. But in Tennessee, who knows, they may be unlevel. But in order to level that up or straighten it, I'm going to select the crop tool, which is right here. You can hit the R key for a quick one. Then I want to select the little ruler here next to angle. And I'm going to hold my mouse key down and I'm going to draw across the roof line here, a straight line. And then I'm going to let it go. And I'm going to hit the return key. That pretty much straightened that building for me. Uh, one of the things I want to do right away is I want to darken the sky just a little bit. So I'm going to use the Lightroom masking tool for that. I'm going to select the masking right here. I'm going to select sky. And it's done a fairly nice job of that. I'm going to reduce the exposure of the sky. I'm going to reduce contrast. And I'm going to reduce the highlights. Okay. So that darkened that sky up just a little bit. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and accept that by clicking on the masking tool right there. Break. Now what I like to do is take this image into Photoshop. Uh, I prefer to edit it further in Photoshop so I can use layer mask over there. They're very powerful. If you don't know how to use layer mask, it might be a good option for you to learn how to. Uh, I'm just going to do a right click on the image, go to edit in, and Adobe Photoshop 2023. And here we are in Photoshop. And what we're going to do first uh, is we're going to apply a filter to this. And the filter I like to use for a photograph like this would be the Nick Collection. Um, and we're going to go to Filter in the menus, Nick Collection 6, and Color Effects. And we're going to use the Brilliance and um, Warp filter, which is right here in the list. And I like to increase saturation. And as you can see, the sun was uh, shiny or trying to come out from behind the clouds um, today. So um, you can see that in the ground here and it's just accentuating the, the sunlight on the bottom edges of the grass and around the building here. I like that. I'm going to go ahead and apply it. And what we're going to do is apply one more filter to this, one of my favorite filters of the Nick Collection, which is called the Glamour Glow. And we'll go right down that same list to find it right here. And we're going to say increase or make it stronger glow. Now, this is where we're going to use a mask. I don't want to apply it to the, to the building. I just want to apply it to the surroundings around the building. Okay. So what I'm going to do is we're going to save this, but we're going to create a mask on this and brush it out. But before I do that, I want to change this one slider right here in Glamour Glow. I like to protect my highlights for some reason, Glamour Glow tends to want to blow the highlights a little bit. So I always move that slider to 100%. I hit the Apply button. Now, while I have the Glamour Glow layer selected here, I'm going down to create a new layer by selecting this button here. Now it's a white layer. And I want to make sure I have a black brush over here. And if you don't, you need to change that to black. And we're going to hit the B key for brush. And this is the symbol you'll get. 
We're going to increase the size and we're going to paint black on the building. Black will hide whatever we, 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 whatever we want. So in this instance here, we had the Glamour Glow layer selected. So it's removing the glare, Glamour Glow tongue, tongue twister from this building. I don't want that to have that Glamour Glow look. I just want the building to be shown. Okay, and we're just painting everything we can. Make the brush a little smaller by using the left square bracket. And we'll paint on this post. I think these are already covered. Let's just make sure we're holding down the left mouse key as we brush it right here along that chimney line. Okay. And it looks to me like I need to do a little bit more in the center here. So we're removing the glamour glow effect from the building, okay? But not the grass area. So when I click the little eyeball here, you'll see it's removed from the whole photograph now. But when I reapply it, it's only affecting the foliage and the sky around the building, okay? I like these settings. I'm gonna go ahead and hit layer and flatten this image, break. Now that's all the changes I wanna do in Photoshop. So I'm going to save these changes and I'm gonna go back to Lightroom. So I hit file and just hit save. It'll save this uh, TIFF file back into Lightroom. And then you can go right down here and select the not, the Lightroom uh, icon. And here is the uh, edited version from Photoshop. This was before we edited it. And this is after we edited it. He, as you can see, it's a great big difference, okay? Especially down here in the bottom. Now, what I like to do right now is apply a crop to this. And I usually do that before I go into Photoshop. I just kind of forgot. So we're just going to tighten this up some and leave us a little bit of wiggle room there and what i'm going to do is unlock the constraints by hitting the lock key just so i can get rid of the bottom a little bit more and kind of move it into the rule of thirds just a hair okay so this is my crop uh, so far i'm liking this image what i've done what i do notice though is uh, the shadows under the porch here could be raised just a little bit so I'm going to create a, a um, mask for that, and we're going to go into um, brush. I'm just going to brush a mask. Actually, I think I'm going to use a radial gra gra gradient, and I'm going to select here and draw across the porch like this, and we'll move it into position, and we're going to increase the shadows a little bit. Bring those up, and maybe just a little bit of exposure, just so we can see the porch. Okay, and you can see what it looked like before, and this is after. Okay, I'm going to select the masking tool again. So this is the image that I created using the D200 camera, which is a 10 megapixel camera. I selected this camera on purpose because I wanted to get that film-like look to it, and I think I've accomplished that in this image. So... That's it for this edit. So there you have it. Uh, this is the edit I did with the D200 uh, images I took today. I hope you learned something from that real quick. And uh, if you want to leave me a comment, you got some other things you want to talk about about this editing process, go ahead and leave me a comment. Love to hear from you. Uh, if you found this video useful, go ahead and give me a like. A big thumbs up would be appreciated. I'm trying to grow my channel. Uh, I'm trying to get above a 1,000 subscribers. Not because I want to monetize the channel. It's just a goal of mine. I was trying to get to 1,000 subscribers. Anyways, uh, in, while we're talking about subscribers, if you're not a subscriber, Go ahead and subscribe to the channel. It doesn't cost you anything to do that. And you can keep up with future things that I put out. So this is Ron Durant. I'm a photographer. I live in East Tennessee. 
Y'all have a nice evening now. Bye-bye.